so thankful for what he did on the cross what he's doing right now what he's gonna do what he already has done right if he never did another thing we could always be thankful for what he already has done amen sing it with us
sing it out. It just says, worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. 
Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Come on, church. You can do better than that this morning. Amen. Give him some praise this morning. I wish somebody would get excited in here this morning. Amen. At the name of Jesus, praise God. Just the mention of his name. Jesus, we are worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Just the mention of his name. Cancer is got to flee. Demons have got to flee. Addiction is broken. At the men- mention of Jesus' name, no stronghold can stand when he is in this place. Praise God, I feel him this morning. Amen. Amen, my goodness. I have a reason to be excited. I have a reason to be excited. I am blessed. I am loved. Amen. I got some favor on my life. Amen. And all of this because of him. Praise God. Anybody else feel that this morning? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Give Jesus some praise one more time. Amen. 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 Just the mention of his name. Praise God. Powerful. Amen. So good to see you guys here this morning. Thank you for being here at church. Living Waters. Beautiful looking crowd this morning. Amen. Beautiful outside. Beautiful inside. Praise God. Ain't nothing better. Amen. Just a couple quick announcements. Uh, Let's see here. If you will get a new newsletter, uh, it will tell you much more in detail uh, what I'm going to try to tell you right now. Uh, But make sure you get that newsletter. Make sure you keep up. Uh, It's a busy time of the year. Amen. And we want you to be involved. We want you to be a part of it and uh, be here with us. I will point out a couple things. November 20th, that's a Wednesday night. We're calling it Gratitude Night. It'll be a Thanksgiving type dinner here at the church. And uh, Pastor has something special planned. And uh, so it starts at 6. Make sure you uh, get here. Plan on being here. Uh, I know we are excited for that. Then if you'll notice on November the 24th, uh, it says our Thanksgiving blessing bags are due. Now, here is the thing. We have a list. Ashlyn has made a list for you guys. If you want to donate these bags, these boxes will be going to families to help them have a Thanksgiving too, right? We had a wonderful turnout last year. We fed, I can't even remember how many families, uh, but you guys did amazing. And I'm looking forward to that again this year. But this is a list right here. So we don't have a bunch of people bringing a bunch of random things. Uh, Please don't clean out your pantry and uh, send us stuff that's about to expire. Uh, I know food is food. But uh, here's a list that will help you keep in line of what we want to put in these bags. And so if you want to help, if you want to be a part of that and feeding some families, blessing them on Thanksgiving, make sure you go back to the sound booth on the table back there or the ledge. Uh, there will be this list. So get this list when you get your newsletter. And, uh, and yeah, and, and, and I know people will be blessed because of Living Waters. Uh, November 27th, that's the very next Wednesday from the 20th, no service, uh, Thanksgiving. So just keep that in mind for those that come. I believe that's all the announcements I have. Like I said, make sure you get a newsletter because there's so many more on there that I'm not going to go over. Uh, Guys, I want to tell you one thing. Malachi 3 and 6, God does not change. Right, we have a very important week coming up. And I'm not going to say anything. But I will tell you this, God does not change, right? It doesn't matter who we vote for, who gets in, God is still God. He still sits on the throne. He is still King of kings, Lord of lords, and He is still in control. And I am His child, and I know that because I am His child, I will be taken care of either way. I'm not taken away from the importance of this. God knows it's important. You vote, you go out and vote. I heard a preacher say this morning, if you don't vote, you deserve Uh, the fleas of a thousand camels so go vote right go vote go vote your can go vote your convictions but more importantly go vote on the biblical principles that we find in our Bible now whoever you vote for it don't matter you go vote for who you want to vote for God still loves you amen you still have a place at the table 
right where you whether you vote one way or the other it does not matter but let's not get so caught up in this that we lose our faith in God right he is our firm foundation we put our faith in things of this world they will fall they will break they will crumble and we will be left disappointed upset and hurt but God is still in control come Tuesday come Wednesday come next week come next year come four years from now God is still in control Listen, he could come back today. He could come back tomorrow, and none of this will even matter anyways. And I wouldn't be so upset, Willie Bird. You, we, might, we might find out the results, and he could come back right after that. And then a bunch of us are going to feel real crazy about how uptight we got about this thing. But seriously, it is important. Amen, but God is still in control. So that's my piece. That's my two cents. Penny March, kids, if you will, if you will, this time come. Amen. Give it up for our children. Amen. 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 Our ushers are coming at this time, giving you an opportunity to give. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time to come together and worship you, God. I thank you for what you are doing in this place. I thank you for the presence that we feel, God. And right now, I pray, God, that you will bless this time of worship through our giving, God. I pray that you will, God, just have your way in this place, have your way in this house, have your way in these people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. How many love Jesus today? While they're giving it out, uh, or excuse me, while they're giving you an opportunity to give it out. Amen. Amen. Why don't you get up and, if you can, shake about five hands and tell them that you love them and you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Will you do that? Come on. Let's, let's let all that can. If you can't, I understand. But if you can, let's worship and let's welcome everybody in the house of the Lord and let's worship Him. Today, amen. I can't, Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Mountains too high and the valleys too
Come on, as we're going back to our seats, let's let's sing it. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Down on my knees, I've learned to stand. I can't even walk without you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing it till you get it. Let's sing it. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh, the mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Oh, down on my knees, I've learned to stand. I can't. Sing it one more time. Sing it with me. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding Sing it now. The mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Oh, but down on my knees, you see, I've learned to stand. I can't. With me just a cappella. Lord, I can't even walk. Let me hear you. Without holding my hand. Oh, that's it. You see the mountains too high. Do you believe that? And the valley is too wide. Oh, but down on my knees. That's where I've learned how to stay. Sing it. Oh, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Can we do that one more time? No music. I can't even walk. Sing it to him. Without you holding my hand. Sing it. The mountain's too high And the valley's too wide Oh, but down on my knees I've learned to stand Because I can't even walk Without you I, I want to tell you something. I feel him. I said, I feel him. I said, I feel him. I don't know about you, but the further I go along in this thing, the more I realize I cannot. I absolutely cannot do it by myself. If I don't have him, if I don't have him holding my hand, I'm not going to make it. Oh, but with him, hallelujah. I said with him, hallelujah. I want you to give, throw up your hands and I want you to praise him right now for about 30 seconds. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hearts, lift your voice in this place. Come on, somebody, help me praise him. Help me lift him up in this place. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men, all men unto me. Father, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. Oh, Father, we can't do this by ourselves. God, with the mountains too high, the valley is too wide, but God, with you, we're going to make it. Come on, sing it.
somebody needs to grab his hand this morning. Somebody, you've been going through some stuff. The enemy's tried to tell you all kind of junk. He's tried to fill your mind and your heart. You're defeated. You're not going to get it. You're not going to make it. But I want to tell you this morning, you're going to make it. I said, I want to tell you say, I want to tell you so. I God, I tell you, you're going to make it. Why don't you turn to about three people and bump their fist and say, I'm going to make it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I tell you, I'm feeling this thing now. I don't know what you come for. My God, but I'm going to say to you, my God, and I came to praise him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm just going to take my time and worship him. If I go overboard and you need to go to the restaurant, then you go right ahead. But I'm determined. I said I'm determined. I said I'm determined that I'm going to be in the presence of God. Somebody help me. My God, I feel him. I tell you this week, that's that song has been on me. And I've realized that I cannot do this without him. I'd be insane to try to do this without him. I can't make a decision without him. I can't get up without him. I can't go to bed without him. I can't make it in this life without him. I wish somebody would help me. Maybe I'm the only one going through something. I don't know. I want to tell you, you're going to make it. The enemy says you're defeated. It's over for you. You're done. What you've done, you've messed up too bad. Some of you in here, you just say, Lord, I've done slipped up too much. I've went too far. I've done too much. But can I tell you, I see the loving arms of Jesus He's got his arms wide open. <laughs> he said, if you'll just come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. You take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest under your soul, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. He nailed whatever you're going through to the cross. I don't know why I'm saying all this. You just bear with me. If, if you don't like it, just pray for me. Please don't talk about me. I got enough people doing that now. In the valleys I want to be a popular preacher. But I'm finding that more and more people talk about me the more I preach. I, I don't know what's going on. But hear me, he's nailed it to the cross. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, he's nailed it to the cross. He's already took it so you wouldn't have to. Somebody help me. My God, I feel him. I'm having myself a blast because I realize when I'm weak, he's strong. When I don't have an answer, he is the answer. When I don't feel like I put one foot in front of another, my blessed God, he gives me his sweet Holy Spirit. Next thing I know, I done went two more miles. Hallelujah. I said, how did I get here? I'm telling you, the Lord looks after us. Will you give him a hand clap of praise? the mountain
is this all right? I, I, I am in a Pentecostal church, right? Well, in fact, I'm the pastor, so that, may, that makes it even better. I'm just going to run with it. Is that all right? I'm so tired. I'm so tired of coming into church. And we clap our hands and we play church. And I'm not saying we do. You get the, I'm talking about the church as a whole. And we go by a program and we got to be out by a certain time. And, you know, I know we fell back, so some of y'all got an extra hour of sleep. You ought to be really energized today. Hey Amen. I don't know why they do that on a Sunday, but they always do. Why can't they do it on another different day? But I believe there's some people in this place this morning. You're heavy. You're heavy. It's been one knock after another. It's been one kick after another. It's been one battle after another. And you, you said, Lord, I, I, I've done all I can do just to get here. And you felt like the woman with the issue of blood. If I could just touch, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, well, can I tell you something? I believe this morning he is in this place. You know why I know that? Because I've invited him here. I've not only invited him here, Sister Ruth, but I've asked him to dwell here. I don't want to be a visitation. I want to be a habitation. Somebody ought to help me. I want to be a habitation. I want this to be a place where that God dwells. So here's what I want to do. I want them to just play that. We'll sing in a second, but as we sing it, if you have a need, if you have a burden, if you're overwhelmed, if you say, Pastor, I, I just done good just to get here, and I need the Lord to touch me. I need the Lord to touch me. I'm going through so much, I don't even know what to do. Can I tell you, he's an on-time God. And if you'll just step out in this aisle, I believe God is going to meet you. Will you do that? When I count to three, I want you to step out in the aisle and I want you to begin to praise the Lord. And I'm going to anoint you with all and we're going to pray the prayer of faith. And we're going to ask God to touch you. And we're going to ask God to minister to you this morning. Is that all right? One, two, three. Will you step out? Will you step out right now? And will you say, will you say, hey, I need a touch of God. I want you to come up this morning with hands raised. Come up with hands raised. Come up with hands raised and believe God this morning to meet you, to touch you, to bless you, and to meet your needs this morning. All right, while they're doing that, I need some prayer warriors. Come on. I need some people that's going to help me to believe God. Come on. If you're here and you believe God, you're spirit-filled. Get you behind somebody. Get you behind somebody. And I want us to believe God right now. And I want them to sing that. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God this morning right now.
can walk. Sing it to him. Without you holding my hand. That sounds good. The mountains too high and the valleys too wide. It's too wide. It's down on my knees. Oh, yeah. That's where I've learned how to stay. Because I can't even walk without you holding my well, hallelujah. Let me see what, oh, it's 1120. I still got 40 minutes. I'm getting ready to let loose. Somebody turn to your name and say, he's getting ready to let loose. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter number four. And this is actually part four of a, uh, I didn't realize it was going to turn into a little series, but it has. On, and today we're going to be talking about the bond of peace, unity as a reflection of God's heart. Unity as a reflection of God's heart. You know, in heaven there are three, the Bible tells us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they bear record. What is beautiful about the Trinity is there are three distinct, yet one. And they work in harmony. They work in unison. They do not work against each other. I wish somebody would help me. Amen. And so today we're going to talk about the bond of peace, unity as a reflection of God's heart. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 3, endeavoring, Paul said, to Keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Isn't that wonderful? You can be seated. Amen. Paul, we find here, writes to the believers in Ephesus. He is addressing a central issue that I can't help but believe, Brother White, that is a central issue for every church and community of faith. That is the issue of unity. In a world, and we see it so much more even today than ever before, I guess, in a world that is so prone to division, we don't know who we want as president. We're so divided on everything. And even what is sad is that that same divisive spirit is now in operation in many of our churches. There's no wonder why we can't fulfill the great commission like God has commanded us to do. Now, I'm not saying every church, I'm not saying every congregation, and I'm not saying all together. I'm just saying for a majority, we are so busy being divisive and having a divisive spirit, we can't even get along in our own church. Oh, it's about to really get quiet, but that's all right. I'm used to that stuff. I can preach to trees. It does not matter to me. Hello, somebody. Differences can be so easily leading to discord that Paul calls the church, he says here, to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Now, I want to just tell you this morning that this is not a casual encouragement. It's a deep call to live in such a way that reflects God's own nature. The bond of peace that Paul speaks of here is not just about avoiding conflict, but it's about cultivating, I want you to hear me, a, a, a spiritual harmony that unites us in Christ and reveals the kingdom of God here on earth. Now, when you use that word cultivate, that means that there's work, Brother Eddie, involved in that. When you cultivate 
a farm. <laughs> you don't just mow the yard. Hello, somebody. That means you got to get a tractor out. You got to till up some hard ground. It takes work to cultivate a farm. To cultivate. That's why I don't even try to raise a garden. It doesn't do me any good. I'm not good at it. Hello, somebody. I do good to keep a fake plant around. But when you cultivate land, that means it's hard labor. And can I tell you that I believe that's what Paul is referencing here is that we are to make every effort. We are to cultivate a, 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 a spiritual harmony. Uh, that means to... To cultivate means to try to acquire or develop a quality, a sentiment, and a skill. Can I tell you that it ought to be the very opposite as it is in the world? The world is divisive. My goodness, we've, we just felt the Spirit of God 10 minutes ago. Where is he at now? My goodness, have you done lost him that quick? But the world is divisive. The world is 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 there are there are people of backbiting and there are people of of division and 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 they don't want you to get ahead of them and 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 you know they won't they want you to do all right but just not better than them can i tell you it's sad that that's even crept into the church smile at me show me your gums or your teeth or something Paul is, it's more than just a casual encouragement. It's a deep call. And in this passage, Paul is teaching us that unity and peace are inseparable. Unity, watch this, without peace lacks true depth. But peace without unity isn't fully complete. Hmm. Look at somebody and say either Amen or oh me. So number one, I want us to look at the nature of peace as the foundation of unity. When Paul speaks of peace, he's not referring to a superficial or a situational calm. But instead here, he's talking about a peace that comes directly from God and is deeply rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. No wonder this world doesn't have much peace. If they don't have Jesus, there's no wonder. If they don't have God, there's no wonder. And I'll even go a step further. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, there's no wonder. I don't know about you, but I cannot make it without either three of them. I need the Father, I need the Son, and I need his sweet Holy Ghost in my life. Somebody help me. You see, earlier in the book of Ephesians, Paul emphasizes that Jesus is our peace. In fact, that's chapter 2, verse 14. You see, Jesus didn't just bring peace. He is our peace. Through his life, through his death, through his resurrection, he tore down barriers. Are you listening and destroyed the hostility that once separated us from God and from each other. Can I tell you all that's done been conquered at Calvary? And we ought not give no room to it. Somebody ought to help me in this place. This peace is profound because it's rooted in reconciliation. Now that's a word that we don't talk about much in the church anymore because we're still holding on to things that, my God, help me. Oh, I... I'm sorry, I stepped on something there, didn't I? I, I, hit, uh, I hit a subject, didn't I? Because we're still holding on to things and we still have ill feelings and we're like that whipped dog that every time you touch that area, <laughs> oh, don't, don't do that, and we start growling and snapping. I wish somebody would help me. But can I tell you that God has called us to reconciliation? It's not the kind of peace that we can manufacture on our own. It's a gift of grace. And through Christ, God has reconciled us to himself. 
transforming us from enemies into beloved children. Can I tell you something this morning? The people that are sitting in this room is not your enemy. I wish I'd get about five more amens. Listen, I'll just go ahead and tell you, if I can get about 20 amens every time I say something, we'll get out of here a whole lot quicker. There it is. I'm getting some new ones now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Makes us one big, one big happy family. This is why Paul calls us to keep this peace. It's already been given. It's already ours in Christ Jesus. In fact, our role is to protect it, to nurture it, to let it flourish in our relationships and community. This bond of peace is what holds the body of Christ together. Despite our differences, can I tell you something? Everybody in this place is going to look at something different. It depends on the subject. Ooh, I'm getting some shaking of heads now. I'm moving. Somebody help me. <laughs> Every one of us is going to see something different. We're not all going to agree on everything. Everybody can't be like me. That was a joke. But everybody can't be like you either. Isn't that beautiful? If it was, we'd be a boring world. Imagine if everybody was like you. And I want you to think about that a minute. Thankfully, my wife is not in here this morning, or I'd say everybody can't be like me. I'd hate to see what she said about it. We're to make every effort, every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. The concept of peace here goes beyond simply, as I said a moment ago, an absence of conflict. Everybody is going to see things different. But we're rooted in the unchanging work of Jesus Christ. That's where we're rooted. If your roots are in anything else, you will shrivel up and die. I wish somebody would help me. We've got to be rooted in Christ Jesus and his unchanging work. You know what I'm telling you this morning is that the work that he did at Calvary is still good enough today. Amen. Hello, somebody. If it was good enough to bring peace among the people of God, then it's still good enough to keep the people of God at peace today. All right. He said, in the bond of the Spirit. So that lets me know that this peace is tied to the work of the Holy Spirit. Paul speaks of it as a bond, a binding force that believers are to actively maintain. We ought to, we ought to maintain peace among people like we brush our teeth, and I hope you do every day. Amen. Amen. Get your gums, get your tongue, get all that, yeah, yeah, amen, floss. We ought to be maintaining, just like you maintain things in your house, you need to maintain the bond of peace. That means don't be so easily offended. But it's all of us, all of us, I want you to hear me. All of us, don't be easily offended. Don't walk around with your feelings on your sleeve. Amen. Praise the Lord. Boy, it's getting real quiet now. Since it is the Spirit who creates this unity among believers, we are called to guard it. That means... Despite if you vote for Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, I'm still going to love you. And I'm giving that as a... I might not like how you vote, but you probably don't like how I vote. But we got to maintain we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're not fighting each other. We're fighting an enemy. 
and his name is Satan and all his little imps that he's got running around. Somebody ought to help me. This peace is a reflection of the unity that Christ achieved through his work on the cross. He broke down walls of hostility. Amen. And Paul sees this unity as and peace as a demonstration of the kingdom of God, a way in which the church is to stand apart from the world. In fact, Paul uses the word peace here, emphasizing a spirit-empowered, Christ-centered unity. It's not a passive state, but it's an active pursuit of reconciliation and communal wholeness that reflects the work of God in bringing believers together as one family. Number two, he said we're to make every effort, every effort to pursue peace. That doesn't mean that we seek peace only when it's convenient or pursue unity when everyone else is getting along with everybody. But this effort speaks to a commitment to peace that persists even in challenging situations. Amen. That means when we deal with our brothers and sisters, that means that we ought to watch what we say. Goodness gracious, I wish I could get some help. I said about 20 amens. Now, we're, we're about 19 right now, way behind. That means that if, if, we're, if we're to be led by the Spirit, he said it's in the bond of the Spirit. That means if we're led by the Spirit, then the Spirit is going to help us to watch this thing right here, even though we can't see it. I can't see this unless I look at it in the mirror. But Paul is saying I, you need to do everything you can. That means bridling this thing in between your face. And I tell you, James said that's a hard thing to do. It's the bridal list thing. It's hard. Well, I want to give them a piece of my, I get it. I get it. But just don't give too much or you won't have any left to give. Well, that didn't go over too good. Paul said, I, I need you to do the best you can. Let the Spirit lead you. Let the Spirit guide you. Let the love of Christ be shed abroad even in so much in your life that it's even overflowing into your speech that when you talk to people, you're still talking out of love. I wish somebody would help me. That means that you're talking with love and out of love and because you love them and because you don't want anything to, to come between you and you, you want to keep the, the unity of the Spirit because if I say really what I want to say and the Spirit is saying, oh, mm, don't, don't do that, don't do it. I just wonder in this place this morning, has anybody ever went to say something and the Spirit of the Lord said, mm, don't, don't do that, don't, don't do that. This call to peace is one of action as I, and often sacrificial. You know what that means? That means that I'm going to put me, myself, and I on the back burner. Oh, preacher, I, I, mm, mm, have you lost your mind? Are you nuts? Have you bumped your noggin? What's wrong with you? I know it's in contrast to what the world says because the world says, hey, put yourself on out there. Think about yourself, only yourself. Don't worry about everybody else. You just worry about what pleases you and what you want to do. You put self in front of everybody else and Christ is saying, no, no, no. I need you to do the very opposite. I need you to put everybody else Ooh, these are hard sermons. What 
did Paul, I think another reference say, he said to prefer your brother or your sister. So let me give you some cr critical uh, and practical ways to help us to cultivate uh, this piece. i got to hurry real quick because it's already 1139, 20 minutes I've been preaching. Got you, Mike. Number one, humility. Humility is about seeing ourselves rightly before God and others. It is about recognizing that we are not self-sufficient. You can't do this on your own. We need each other. I know there are some people that think you're bad to the bone and you don't need anybody and you got it. But I want to tell you that won't work long. We need each other. Are you listening to me? I said we need each other. I need you to pray for me. You need me. Are you listening? To pray for you. I need you to push back a plate, a meal or two, and fast on my behalf and say, God, touch him. God, anoint him. God, I need you to pour out your spirit on him. I need you to bless his family, and I need to do the same. I need to push back some plates and say, God, I want you to bless Brother Eddie. I want you to bless Sister Ruth. I need you to bless all of our other brothers and sisters, and you begin to name them and say, God, just bless their, bless their family. Anoint them. God, may your spirit rest upon them. Can I tell you that we need the prayers of the saints because I'm reminded in a scripture where the, the Bible says that Peter was in prison. And the people of God begin to pray. Are you listening to me? And all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord come right into that, hallelujah, into that prison, hallelujah, and led Peter right on out. I want to tell you, I can't do this by myself, but with him and us together, we can do it for the kingdom of God. Well, well, all of us are dependent on God's grace. We need to lay down our pride, our need to be right, our desire to control, and instead choose to listen, be empathetic, and serve. Humility allows us to approach others from a place of superiority, not from a place of superiority, excuse me, but with open hands and an open heart. Then there's gentleness. Gentleness is the ability to respond with kindness and restraint. It is the opposite of harshness, which can create tension and division. He requires us to control our actions, to temper our words and to prioritize the well-being of others. It means treating each person with respect. Mm -hmm. You ever heard somebody, don't disrespect me. I got it. And show care that God has shown to us. You see, when we do this, we are being reflective of God's own heart. How much has he shown you? I wish somebody would help me. How much grace has, she, has he shown you? How, 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 much, how, much, how much empathy, how much all of these things has God shown to you? Therefore, we ought to be reflective of the character of Christ. It's amazing to me when Jesus is on trial, People are spitting on him. Now I tell you, we're going to have camp meeting. Here I'm talking about this and I'm talking about camp meeting now. If you spit and it hits me. Are you listening? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's one thing. Now that's, that's just pure as what Stokes County is. Nasty. That's pure nasty. Are you listening? When you decide you're going to hawk one on somebody. But Jesus 
didn't open my mouth. They spit on him, plucked his beard, slapped him, all of that. And the Bible says, Brother Eddie, he didn't open his mouth. What did he do? He opened up his arms on Calvary and showed them the love of God. All right. I see. I need to hurry. Patience. means we need to have patience. This is, these are things I believe that Paul is saying here. Patience is the ability to wait without frustration. We can't even do that in the grocery store. We got self-checkout now. I have sat back. It, it's people are they're humorous. That was your time to say amen, but anyway. But I I've I've sat back and watched them and, and I've seen them in drive throughs I've seen them in the grocery store, and if it don't go as quick as they want it. I mean they're just doing all kind of stuff. I saw a cop the other day. I saw a cop behind somebody. I mean, he couldn't get no closer, and his hands was up like this. I said, where's, where's the steering wheel? I won't tell you where or who it was, but I'm just saying. We're so much in a hurry. Don't take anything to get frustrated. But Paul is saying, listen, this involves being patient. That means waiting without being frustrated. To endure discomfort without resentment. It means making space for others to grow. There are some people who have not been saved as long as you. who may not have it all together like you got it together. I get it. We're perfect. We need to allow them to make mistakes. You make them too. And offer grace as they mature. We're still all being worked on. If you didn't laugh, if you ain't seen it last, but we're all still on the wheel. Boy, this is tough, I tell you. Lord, can't you let me preach on heaven sometime? My goodness, we can all shout then. We're all still on the wheel. You remember that old song, he's still working on me? <laughs> to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars. The sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. I love how patient he must be because he's still. Okay. Okay. Patience acknowledges that we're all on a journey. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. Okay. That none of us have arrived. And that we need each other's encouragement along the way. What would it hurt? For us, again, making every effort to keep the bond of unity and the peace and the spirit of God and all that sort of thing, what would it hurt for you to open this right here and give somebody an encouraging word? This is how we walk in church. We look like we've done sucked on a dozen lemons. Are you listening? We're mad at our spouse. They made us mad on the way to church and we're still boiling over that. Our children has done made us mad, whatever the case be. But I'm telling you, what would it hurt even during the week if you see somebody out at Walmart or you see them out at Lowe's Food or you see them out at the bank, what would it hurt to give us somebody a smile? It's not going to break your face, I promise, if you'll just smile at somebody and let them see the love of God. I walked into a bank the other week 
And one of, the, one of the first things that one of the tellers said, there's my favorite preacher. I said, where's he at? <laughs> I've not done anything special when I go to the bank other than deposit money or get my money. <laughs> but yet, because when I go in, I choose to be friendly. Does that really hurt that bad? And, and, and to show the love of God? And then one day I walk in and she said, there's my favorite preacher. I don't even know if the woman even goes to church. But you know what? It hit me then. I said, you know what? Something is clicking. Something is clicking. Can I tell you that when we're here or when we're out there, something ought to be clicking with people around us. They ought to know, listen, it doesn't mean that we're perfect, but at least it means that we're in right relationship with him and we're sharing the love of God even sometimes without opening our mouth. I'm not going to get done today. It's just not going to happen. I run my mouth too much. But in this, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to try to land this thing here in just a minute. He said, I believe in this, making every effort, that means you bear with one another in love. This ain't just putting up with each other. <laughs> I don't just put up with my wife. I stay with her because I love her. Yeah. We have our ways. We shared some of them yesterday. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> 27 years of marriage, that's what you do. Here's what I don't, well, here's what I don't like about you. Ba, 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 ba. Yes, ma'am. How do I fix it? <laughs> I get it. This is not just putting up with each other. That's not what Paul is saying here. Hear me. It's a decision to love deep. Why does church hurt hurt so bad? Because you love deep. And I can tell you something. I'm going to share some light. Everybody in this house has been hurt before. Everybody, if you could pull back the facade. Boy, I'm just getting with it today. I, you just going to have to bear with me. You would see scars. Some longer than others. Things that's been said, things that's been done, hurt that has occurred, whether intentional or not. But can I tell you, Paul is saying we needed to make a decision to love deep and to forgive freely. Can I tell you something? In order to be forgiven, we've got to forgive. And I don't know about you, but I remember what I was before God got a hold of me. I said, I remember what I was before God got a hold of me. I don't know where I'd be right now if it hadn't been the Lord that shined light on my path. Are you thankful this morning that God has shown his light on your path? I'm not who I should be, but thank God I'm not who I used to be. But he's still working on me. All right. I told you I'm getting ready to land it. That's the second getting ready to land. And to stand together even when we may not fully understand or agree. It's this kind of love that binds us together, enabling us to stay committed to peace and unity. It's more than tolerance. It's about selfless, Christ-like love that seeks the best for each other. 
I'm going to end that. I'm not going to finish today. I'll have to finish some other time. But that's what he's talking about making every effort. Do everything you can. Do absolute everything you can. Now, I just don't believe one minute that Paul is talking about getting run over and being a doormat. But he's talking about all that Christ has given you forgiveness, love, acceptance, and a whole lot more. That's what I want you to give to others. I didn't, I didn't get a solid amen. got one yes, not a solid amen. This is what Paul is talking about. Make every effort. And that is work. Just like I said a moment ago, 27 years of marriage, that's work. I got married on love. That love has grown. That has now merged into commitment. When I stood up there and took vows, I meant it. My wife and I started in the fire, and I'm not going to end up in the smoke. Literally, we did. The flowers caught on fire behind us. Folks, the bond of peace is only possible when we make every effort to be united just like God and the heart of God. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as I mentioned a moment ago, they work in unison. Everything they do, they do together. They complement each other. They're not contradictory. They compliment, and we ought to be complimenting each other as a light to this world. Well, I'm going to end right there. Would you stand with me? Would you stand? I, I know we had altar call a while ago, but is there anybody that need you need anything from God? I'll be happy to pray with you again because I believe that God is here to meet your need, whatever it may be. Hallelujah. Will you just slip up your hand? You don't have to, but would you just slip up your hand and will you be just praise him for what he's given you, for what he has shown to you, for what he has bestowed upon you? The grace, the mercy, the love. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He's given his spirit. He's given his sacrifice, his all, so that we could have, so that we could have eternal life and all that comes with that, so that we could be blessed. He was poor that we might become rich. I'm not talking about three million dollars in the bank. I'm talking about rich in faith and hope and love. Hallelujah. And I know he blesses us in other ways as well, but I'm thankful this morning. While you're stretching your hands to heaven, will you stretch some this way as I pray for this dear sister? Hallelujah, that God will touch her this morning. Oh, why do I fear to 
you for being here today. How many have received the word with gladness? Father, I pray right now, Lord, that you will bless your people. I ask God that your face will shine upon them, that you will bless them, that you will keep them. God, that you will work on their behalf. I pray that you will bless them in every possible way. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Well, to me, he's become everything. Oh, he's everything. 